What's up? We're upstairs at the Spectrum uh, with Stan from Sugar Ray. Hey, hey. Cool. Um, yeah, so like, you know, how long have you guys been around? Uh, we started actually playing um, about seven or eight years ago. We were, uh, we were a cover band and we played down in, uh, in Southern California at places like um, San Diego and Newport Beach, California down there. There was like there's like a surf culture down there, you know, yeah. and we were kind of involved with that. We were playing cover songs at uh, keg parties for like fraternities and sororities and shit like that, stuff like that. That's it. Can I cuss? Yeah, go ahead. All right. You, yeah. can, you can beep it out. Shit. No, we don't beep it. It's not censored. All right, cool. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's, that's what happened, man. We just started playing covers down, down at these parties. And, um, you know, after about two or three years playing these covers and making some money and just like goofing around, we decided to write our own songs. And we get gigs at clubs, you know, right down there on the beach. and all the people would come because it would be like a party. Yeah. They'd be like, hey, you know, and we were called the Shrinky Dinks <laughs> back in the day, you know, before uh, we had to change our name because of a, a problem with one of the toy makers. Because Shrinky Dinks is a toy by Mattel Toys and they wouldn't let us use a name. It was kind of a hassle. But uh, so everyone would be like, the Shrinky Dinks, are, they're playing tonight at, the, at this club and, and, you know, there's, there's free beer and we're going to go. And so then, you know, we just got a following. And so it's been about seven or eight years, like, as that formation of the band, which is the exact same members except for our DJ, who we added about four years ago. Cool. What kind of covers did you do? Like, who? We did everything. We did like Motorhead. We did Lover Boy, like working for the weekend. We just like we we learn about five or six covers every time we like, practice, so that if people just like yelled out like Pat Benatar or like, some cheesy yeah. ass crap, we could play it. So and we do like Zodiac Mind Warp or old Circle Jerks or Black Flag stuff, whatever it was. We just we just try to. Even if we didn't really know, we'd just give it a shot, you know? Cool. And if you guys had a chat, a choice right now, if someone came up uh, to you and gave you the chats, what would you guys rather be? Musicians or porno stars? Um, I think musicians, you know? I mean, at least at least me. I mean, I, I love porno. We, <laughs> we have, like, a huge collection. We used to live together in this big house in Los Angeles. We just moved out recently, but the band lived together for four years. And over those four years, People in Los Angeles that we got to know, uh, I knew one, one or two guys that worked for Vivid Video, you know, one of the big porno companies, and they come over and they dump off boxes of like 400 pornos at our house. So we had like 900 films at our house, oh, yeah. and you know, each guy is like a total porno whiz, you know, we, I mean, it's not really that much to be proud of, but it's kind of fun. Yeah. Would, you, would you agree that Ron Jeremy is the greatest porno I, star? I, I think that shirt, I was going to comment on that. Oh, well, he's got to be one of the most, you know, famous, you know, yeah. he's the, and the greatest. I mean, the guy's a total fucking pig, you know, yeah. he's just so great. He's just, you know, he doesn't give a fuck. And he goes out in L.A. too. In Los Angeles, like, you go out to, like, a place like a Rainbow, which is, like, a club there, and he'll pull up and, like, you know, Valley park his own car. He won't let anyone else park it. He's got, like, an old, like, piece of shit car. And he'll get out and he'll just be like, yeah, and he'll give porno mags to, like, people <laughs> and just go in the club and, you know, just try to get, try to get chicks or whatever he does. But he is... He's great, man. He's a scumbag. <laughs> cool. How long, ago, how long ago was it that you guys decided you wanted to be... Well, you personally, how long ago was it that you decided you wanted to be a musician? Um, well, my mom was pretty musical, so I always kind of grew up in, in like a musical household, but uh, I was probably about eight or nine years old, and you know, I was tinkering around on piano, and just like, you know, my mom had a microphone and like, you know, a little PA set up, so I'd always like do like the, the beginning of karaoke type of things, like way back when I was a little tiny kids. So I, I knew it, like, that I was going to be involved in it somehow. I mean, I, even if I would have been, you know, like a tech or like a sound guy or something, I just wanted to be in music, so, but it, it worked out this way, so I'm not mad. Cool. Uh, how'd you guys, like, how'd you guys all meet? We met, uh, in high school. Um, all of us, we went to the same high school except for, uh, Murphy, our bass player. Okay. And, um, the, the reason we met him is because uh, at our high school, his sister went to our high school and I was dating his sister. <laughs> And I knew that her older brother played in a band at the other high school. So we were just friends, and we just threw it together. We're like, let's get together and play some covers. And, um, you know, that was it. We just knew each other, like, through, uh, you know, friends at school. So that was kind of cool. Do you guys ever feel sometimes like, uh, like you see in, like, the No Doubt video for Don't Speak, how the lead singer gets all the attention? Do you ever feel that way towards Mark, or do you ever, like, yeah. not really give a shit? Absolutely. I mean, I think in any situation where, you know, you have a successful... Oh, whoops. Thanks. You have like a, a successful band with a, you know, a front person that's either like a Gwen or like a Mark or something. You're gonna get that, you know. And but it dates way back, like about eight years ago. I mean, Mark still got like all, I mean, even when we were like this big and just st starting out playing covers. I mean, he, he didn't even need to be in a band. He just got all the chicks anyway because you know, he's, yeah, he's like 
good looking front guy, you know, outgoing personality. But so we were always like, we always known he, you know, that's that's his role. Our role is this. I mean, maybe some of us aren't really like, it's ecstatic about it. But I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, you got to accept your role. And, and I have I have a great time now. It's kind of funny because Mark, sometimes he has a hard time. You know, he has uh, his privacy invaded. You know, yeah. like in the states and stuff, he can't really go to to certain places and, or else you know he creates like a stir. You know. And I don't have that problem, so I'm happy about that. Yeah. I, yeah, I love my privacy. I don't need it, you know, fuck yeah. with. I mean, I think it's cool that I can, you know, walk down the street and just get a beer and do whatever and not be hassled. Cool. And, um, oh, shit. I completely <laughs> forgot what I was going to say. Son of a bitch. Yeah, um, what do you guys find? What do you find yourself listening to more? Like, do you listen to a lot of, like, either punk or ska or whatnot? I listen, I think all, all of our tastes in the band are so eclectic and weird. Like I just popped out of the CD player because I was going to go listen to uh, Elvis Costello, but I, I was trying to get a CD in there, and there was a CD already in there, and it was a uh, Mob Deep, you know, this like yeah. heavy rap, like hip hop act, and uh, and it wasn't our DJ listening to it, it was Mark listening to it. So it's like everyone just listens to weird shit. But yeah, I mean, I, right now I'm like kind of in like a '70s uh, English punk thing where I'm listening to like The Clash, and yeah. you know, I'm even listening to, like some some jam and, and some stuff like that, but. You know, it just goes back and forth. I mean, and I listened to like I, I was just listening to Goldfinger yesterday because I mean we're on tour with them. But you know, it's just it's different. Whatever. I mean, there's Willie Nelson in the front CD player right now. Too. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, Johnny Cash. It's just it's it's a weird thing. It's like everyone likes so many different types of music, and I get turned on to th things by like other guys in the band. You know, Rodney, our guitar player, might you know go, hey, you gotta listen to this Chet Baker disc. He's you know this awesome old jazz guy. So. It just gets thrown around and we get regurgitated music on our bus. I like it. Cool. And between us, I, uh, this summer someone told me Mark looks like Vanilla Ice. <laughs> what do you think? It's funny because, yeah, we got a lot of that, you know? Like, he used to just have regular brown hair and whatever. And then, like, one of our friends who's like a hairdresser goes, I'm going to cut your hair. I'm going to give you a new look. So Mark goes, all right. And the guy who does it was actually, like, this friend of ours who, like, he's a, he actually cuts hair, but he's a drunk. Oh, you shit. Know? So like he, they were getting, they were drinking beers and they were doing Mark's hair and he like put all this like bleach in the front and like spiked it up and he did look like Vanilla Ice and so someone started a rumor that it was Vanilla Ice and this is his new band <laughs> and so on the internet and everything it was just like you know everyone was going are you really Vanilla Ice is this really you blah blah, blah. And, and so we started we started playing um, Ice Ice Baby in the set and just like fucking with people <laughs> and people were like. Is this real? Is he really? And then you know, but obviously he's not. You know, but it's yeah. funny. It's just a funny thing because he, most people would play it off like, no, 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 we're Sugar Ray, but we're like, yeah, I am Vanilla Ice. Fuck you. <laughs> and if you, what would you, um, like, what you guys changed since the first album? Um, like, how do you explain the change? Um, I mean, I think you know, after our first record came out and we went on tour for quite a while, I and mean, we toured for over a year. And we got to go to Europe like four or five times, and I don't know, we just got to know each other on the road as opposed to just like friends that jammed in a band. I mean, we were like together so much that like we, we every, every, every step of the band increased a little bit. Like we, we um, the experiences just like on the road or just lyrically or just musically just got better. I mean, we were just, uh, you know, a tighter unit. So I think that, and then with the second record, we worked with this producer who uh, is a phenomenal genius, you know, this guy named David Kahn. And he really took our, our everything, our, just our whole ideas about approaching songwriting and production and music, and he took it to the next level. So that's what really changed. We just kind of grew up, you know? Cool. I guess my last question would be like, uh, first off, I worked tour in Montreal. And uh, I remember I, well, I was watching you guys a bit, and I really, I'd never heard of Sugar Ray really. Like, I've heard some stuff, but uh -huh. you know. Um, like of course you're mean machine stuff like that, right. but uh, and all of a sudden like so not many people knew you, but all of a sudden like it seemed to be like three days later, fly was everywhere. So how do you like, how do you feel about that? Like maybe going home or one day just finding out that your song was being played all over the place. It was really weird, you know. I mean to tell you the truth, it was like, and it wasn't really the format type of song that you know we're we're a rock band, you know. We have we have a DJ and we play rock. I mean. Fly is like a summer vibe track, you know, I don't even play drums on that song, I came out and play guitar, and it was weird, it was like, you know, it pretty much was one or two or three days, you know, it was like, boom, it went on MTV like ten times, and heard it on the radio like a hundred times, and it was just like, this is phenomenal, you know, I don't know if it's going to hurt us or what, but we were just like, we've been playing together for seven or eight years, and it's like, 
you really want to get a song on the radio and you yeah. really want it, you know, that, that's, you know, some bands are like, oh, we don't want that commercial success, but we are like, we want it, you know, yeah. that's what we're shooting for, you know, I want my mom to turn on MTV and see it, you know, so it, it was weird in, in a lot of ways because you're like, one day you're nothing and the next day like, like you're very popular, but I mean, it, it wasn't overnight for us, I mean, it took us eight years to get there, so I, I think it, for us it was like a blessing and you know, we're, we get to do another record now, we get to do our third record, which before this record we weren't sure if we'd ever do, you know, record number three, and it just opens a lot of doors and we opportunity to write more songs and get to tour with the great bands like Goldfinger and I mean, it's cool. Cool. Alright, thanks a lot. Alright, thanks cool. Matt. Right on. So can you give me an ID saying sure. you're standing or sugar sure and but not watching Punk Empire? Okay, wait, what do I say? You're stand, blah, 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 it's called Punk Empire. Punk Empire, okay. Hey all you freaks out there, this is Stan from Sugar Ray, and you're watching Punk Empire, baby. Cool, cool. thanks a lot.